Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you, Jaina and uh, CLPR, for inviting me for this very, very important legal uh, conference that happens every year. This is the first time I'm, I've come here, even though I was invited previously. So I'm really happy, honored, and also I feel a very big responsibility in being in this conference. Uh, we are going to talk about implementation of the transgender legal rights, where we stand after the Nalsa judgment. Uh, the Nalsa judgment, as you all know, it happened in 2000, April 15, 2014. And April, for, uh, April 15, in April 15, 2008, was when the, the Tamil Nadu government in all of India for the first time established the Transgender Welfare Board. And the judgment came on uh, April 15th. The NASA judgment came on the same date, April 15th. And much of the NASA judgment also follows some of the implementations. The recommendations actually have been looked out uh, from the Tamil Nadu government's model as well. So April can also be a month in India as a transgender uh, history month or transgender awareness month, of course. We need to have our own month and our, as we have our own day unofficially. And April 15th has to be National Transgender Day, which is unofficially we are celebrating, but it has to go official as well. So, how do I go to the next slide? So this is one of the pictures where you see I and a lot of uh, other people who are mostly uh, the ju judges and it's, they're all judges. And on the other side are all lawyers. So um, this was all the work that uh, I and so many other activists we did that summed up and uh, the Nalsa judgment was passed. Before me, there have been pe people from the transgender and hijra community and the Tirunanga and Mangalmukhi community who have been fighting for our rights on the streets uh, with so much of tears, shame, punishments, exclusion by the government, discrimination and uh, punishment by the police and shaming of the public. And there has been a lot of history that has not been told. And uh, whatever we have been seeing for the past 20 years is only contemporary history. There has been a lot of uh, fighting that has happened before. People who have, uh, who have stood for elections and have won, and people who have stood for elections and who have lost, like Kamala Jan, and uh, you know, a lot of, lot of people. I think for us, before even going to the Nansa judgment, it's also important that we celebrate our seniors, our, our people who have gotten us this position today where we are today talking about after NALSA judgment and after Transgender Rights Protection Act of 2020, 21 and all that. So talking about the NALSA judgment, um, right from 2005, the activism in India, especially when it comes to trans rights, began to get more attention and particularly, it also happened because of the HIV epidemic that happened in our country. The visibility that the targeted populations uh, who, I mean, the projects of the sexual health uh, who were focusing on HIV AIDS and uh, the vulnerable population uh, who were possibly infected by HIV was, of course, the gay people and transgender people who are into sex work. And that is how our community's visibility came into the mainstream, into the media, into the government, and into the funding agencies from abroad, uh, into the World Health Organization and the UN and all that. But once the HIV is, HIV 
intervention is gone. It's more about legal rights today. And we are today at a point where uh, our visibility actually happened because of the HIV epidemic, obviously. So I just wanted to say that we are celebrating our success, but at the same time, the NALSA judgment has not given us uh, whatever the NALSA judgment imp implementations and recommendations the Supreme Court has given us, much of that has not been implemented and it is so, so sad that it's, uh, it, it has not been done so far. Even after eight years of the NALSA, National Legal Services Authority judgment, recognizing our transgender community's legal rights, the community is still seeking justice when it comes to regards to education, health, care, the right to family and employment opportunities as well. I mean, we all know that still our community people are suffering because of being discriminated. And especially a girl, uh, you, we, you all might have, some of you might have signed a petition as well with Jane Kaushik, who was a teacher in the UP school, who was discriminated because she uh, let out her gender identity as a transgender person. She has been, her career has been sabotaged uh, by the school. So even after uh, all this Transgender Protection Act, NALSA judgment and all that, our community is still on the streets. Educated people still go through a lot of discrimination. Those people who wanted to have a dignified life still suffer. And the public and other people ask us, why are you begging? Why are you uh, doing sex work? We are giving you opportunities. Look at how the government is helping and all that. Whereas in reality, family exclusion is one of the most worst things that can happen to any individual, and that is consistently, nonstop, have, we are all going through. Families are still excluding us, and of course the state is also in one way. Family acceptance is all, as you all know, is more important, and our protection begins with the family. However, the biological families of uh, us still continue to exclude us and the state has not done anything proactive to stop that. I know that a lot of parents till today are excluding uh, transgender persons, a member of a family who is transgender or non-binary or, or a person who is gay or lesbian for that matter. And what kind of a punishment are these people given? Where is the prevention to exclude? I mean, it's a crime, right? You raise a child and then because of gender identity or a sexual orientation, you abandon that person, it's, it's a crime. But we are not punishing the families, rather the victim is left to be punished by the society through exclusion, discrimination, non-acceptance, and extortion, and so many other ways, of course. So the family acceptance has, has not happened. I mean, Nalsa judgment was good in certain ways wherein it gave us so much of visibility and also it got us uh, some transgender people, especially uh, some doctors, some police officers, some lawyers and all those. Our community people are now coming out and making all of us proud. Uh, and we are celebrating it at the same time when you look at the people who are living in villages and small towns, transgender community, they have not received what they should actually have received. The respect, the dignity, the acceptance from the family, that's all missing. And that is because the Nalsa judgment has not reached where it should go. Every part of the country, the villages, the towns. So it is, it is a, who should do it? The governments, the government should, take initiatives to sensitize our families, to sensitize our schools, to include and respect our transgender children, and uh, create a safe space and environment for enabling environment for our transgender and non-binary and gender non-conforming children. And that's not happening. Till today, those who study these little kids in their teenage years who's, who are maybe trans or maybe gay, but very effeminate boys and very masculine girls. They all go through discrimination because of uh, lack of awareness on gender identity, uh, sexual education in schools. 
The contrary to the self-identification, we all know this. While the judgment says, yeah, while the judgment says the transgender person should be able to self-identify, the current law says that person has to be certified by a medical officer or a magistrate. So this is one of the contradictory things from the judgment of the NALSA. And the community goes through a lot of, you know, our genitals are checked by the medical officer. If we, are, uh, if we have done our surgeries or not, that itself is a personal violation. Itself is a human rights violation, of course. Nobody checks a woman or a man if uh, they are genitals, right? Uh, only when they are born, the doctors do it. So it's again a violation. And uh, as we all know, the Transgender Protection Act uh, the, during the consultation, not activists, many of the activists were not involved in framing of the transgender protection bill. And uh, yeah, reservation. Reservation for the transgender community still remains a very, very distant dream. The NASA judgment, particularly one of the most important recommendations by the Supreme Court was reservation in educational institutions and public opportunities, that is employment and government sector and all that, as envisaged under the Article, 15, uh, Article 15.4, considering the community as socially and educationally backward classes. But the union government has completely remained silent on reservations for the community. So, I mean, they are purposefully doing it. We all know that they are purposefully doing it because we are not a vote bank. And we, have, we, are, we are just a minuscule minority, the trans community is. So reservation is a big political thing, of course. So we are not, I mean, the Supreme Court judgment in that aspect is being ignored by the government. And I would also like to share from the next slide that almost 92%, I'm taking this from the Quint and other sources, almost 92% of members of the transgender community have been denied jobs in organized sector. About 96% are pushed to take up low paying jobs and forced to indulge in beggary and sex work. You see, that's 96%, it's not 6%, it's 96%. And at least 60% of them have never attended schools. And it could actually be more. I know that it's, it could actually be more. As per a study conducted by the National Human Rights Commission. And uh, this is actually an authentic information. And we all know from our friends, uh, I mean, people like me, Grace Banu, Aksha, and uh, Santa Kurai, we all had in some way family acceptance. We could go to schools to colleges, finish our education from universities and all that, get a degree, and then struggle with the system. And we are here today because we had our family support. And because we had our family support, we had education and opportunities. But there are hundreds and thousands of our community people who are on the streets begging, doing sex work, and victimized. Uh, because of family exclusion, they are not getting enough opportunities, enough acceptance and recognition. So we are here to voice for them, to talk about their rights. And NALSA judgment was a hope that it would be implemented and every, our, our life is going to change. Unfortunately, it has not. Yeah, over to the next slide. You see, in this slide, you see uh, transgender people our community people from 250 years ago, during the British rule, the trans people were doing, I mean, you see they have a drum and uh, probably they are artists, folk dancers, folk singers and all that. The transgender community, even after 250 years, we are still doing the same thing we did 100, I mean 250 years ago. The community is still doing what it 250 years ago during the British period, dancing, begging, doing sex work uh, for livelihood. I'm not saying this is wrong, but I'm saying that these are the only available opportunities for so many people, particularly the ones who are not educated. 
are the ones who are very large in number. You and I, and the person, all of you who listen to me while I speak in English and understand, we are all educated and we are very minuscule, minority within our trans community. But there are people, hundreds and thousands, who are the ones whose life should be represented. And over to the next slide, yes. So today, as you know, I don't have to tell you, the transgender people, our community leads a very marginalized existence. Often spotted begging in the streets at our traffic signals and at people's homes, blessing on the occasion of a childbirth or mm -hmm. marriage and all that. Of course, we might also call it a culture and I don't want to challenge it, but it remains a fact that even though it could be a culture, still we are discriminated. We, are not, we may be respected as demigods and all that, but we are not respected as humans and treated equally. Uh, let's go to the, some of the legal milestones we have achieved over the years. There are many actually, but I'm just putting some of them. On April 14, uh, April 2014, India Supreme Court legally recognized transgender people and uh, that is in our judgment. In August 2017, Right to Privacy Act judgment, the Supreme Court said that sexual orientation is an essential attribute of privacy and must be protected. And in September 2018, Section 377, which were penalized homosexuality, was decriminalized. And in May 2022, National Medical Co Commission banned conversion therapy and called it professionally misconduct. And in September 2022, it's all this, this year, of course, Supreme Court widened the definition of family, including unmarried and queer couples. It was, it was just an apex, apex courts. It's, it's not an amended verdict, but still. These are some of the hopes that we have received in spite of the Nalsa judgment and its aftermath, the governments who are inactive in uh, in, in, in upholding our rights, recognizing our rights and supporting and helping our community. But besides this, there are many, of course. When we talk about the right to adoption, every transgender person deserves a family. I mean, most of us, uh, I know that me and a uh, lot many of us are in our 40s, 30s and 50s and 60s and many of us live a very lonely life, of course. Because on the one side, our biological family may support us or may not support us. And of course, our transgender family is all, always there. But when your biological families don't support, and when, even when they support, at one point of time, when we get older, will, there be, will they be for us? Is, is one big question many of us have. So uh, I know a lot of transgender senior citizens who are living a very lonely life. So much attention has to be given also to transgender people who are older, their welfare, their health care has also uh, has to be given importance by the government through law, through health care system and all that. Uh, every trans woman uh, dreams of uh, marriage, a husband, a children, many of them, not all of them, many of them. And like any, any other citizen in this country, transgender women also deserve, if they want a family, a husband, a child, they deserve that. But for, unfortunately, because of, the, uh, re, because of the discrimination that trans people go through, neither trans men nor uh, trans women are able to set up a family, are not able to adopt children. Uh, because of the existing discrimination, it's, it's, it's being impossible. And the government itself is not very sensitized. There's a lot of drama going on in, in Delhi with the, uh, what to say, particularly with not the proper information that has to be going to the authorities and the ministry is not going. And because of this, the entire transgender community is victimized, it's, it's suffering. So as always, our communities, 
fight has to be strengthened, we have to be united, and we have to continue, in spite of the Nalsa judgment, in spite of all these legal milestones that we have achieved, we continue to, we still have to fight, we have to stand up. Of course, during Pride Month, we all celebrate, and uh, we are happy, and we recognize our rights and our identities, and we are all proud of ourselves, which I, I think is so essential, because self-identity, self-identification, self-respect, self-celebration is important, as much as, as my friend Grace Banu says, self-care is also important for all of us. So while we all celebrate and take care of ourselves, we need to have the stamina and strength to fight, not just for us, for today's children who may be transgender and coming out, and we must ensure that they don't suffer, they enjoy equal space, they enjoy all the, uh, what we have not uh, enjoyed, the rights, to, uh, the rights to family inclusion, the right to uh, marriage, the right to ch children's rights, the right to work in a corporate or a government institution without discrimination, without exclusion, without marginalization. So that is what, that's why we all have to be aware of what is going on with the legal rights. We need to stand up, uphold uh, our own rights and voice for, for us and for the transgender and non gender non-conforming children of our country in the future. Thank you. Thank you.